YouTube, it's Faye. It's hot outside. And for today's video, uh, you can see behind me, I've got my crappy trailer again. So this is crappy trailer series part two. Um, and I just got it back from blasting. And as you can see, there is a lot of work that has to happen to this poor trailer in order to make it like roadworthy and at least able to carry the sort of load that I'm planning on you know, actually doing with this thing um, and making it safe. Some places are gonna be fairly straightforward and other places are gonna be kind of a challenge. So for today's video, I'm pretty much just gonna be welding it up and prepping it for primer and giving some tips and tricks along the way. So there's no time like the present. Let's get to it. So there's a section of this trailer that has some old signs on it that are made of galvanized metal. So um, Danny had taught me, Danny's right here, um, previously, hi Danny, um, about the benefits of using this muriatic acid. This is a perfect example of why you would use muriatic acid. Muriatic acid is not for everything. You don't want to use it on everything. It's very invasive. It gets right right down to it. You're going to need to treat it afterwards. Baking soda and water will neutralize it. But we're doing automotive parts, so that's perfectly fine. If you're going to weld, if you're going to weld anything with galvanized, you don't want to smell that. You're going to end up being dead. You're going to have all kinds of stuff in your lungs. Uh, so you want to remove the galvanizing from, a, from anything that's galvanized that you're going to weld. Muriatic acid is perfect. You dip it in muriatic acid, it'll get rid of it all. Then you have bare metal. Here's the deal. It's bare metal and it will instantly rust. So just remember you're removing everything from it and you're gonna have just clean metal. It's perfect to weld, but you're gonna have to treat it afterwards. Um, on an oil pan, it's perfect. You cannot put this in a glass bead machine. Everybody does, like valve covers. You have a baffle inside. You're not gonna get the glass beads out of here you're not going to. It's gonna cost you an engine. I would rather put that on rusted, but everybody does it. So only because everybody does it doesn't mean it's right. Okay, so this would be the perfect example of why you would use muriatic acid. And this is not as strong as it could be. It needs to be in a plastic drum. Don't make a mistake and put muriatic acid in a steel drum. It'll be there for about a week or two. <laughs> <laughs> and then it won't. So this has been actually diluted quite a bit because normally if it was strong, it would start just fuzzing really bad. But just give it a little bit. Look what's happening. You see what's happening to the, the coat hanger? Yeah. That's what's going to happen to your galvanized parts. So if we just right now already, you can see how it's removed the, <gasps> the coating. Yes! Look at the pan right now. Oh my god, that was like, you saw this happen, people. That was like five seconds. That was just like five seconds. This is pretty rusty, and, well, and this is diluted quite a bit. You could make it as strong as you want, or we're going to leave it in there for just a little bit. You want to do it outside in a well-ventilated area. Muratic acid doesn't smell good. You're, you're not going to want to do it. Um, it's what they use to clean swimming pools with. Um, it needs to be outdoors. You need to have it in a plastic drum. You need to seal it because you don't want little kids jumping in and going swimming. But <laughs> you gotta put all those disclaimers out there because somebody will stick their hand in there. You wanna put rubber gloves on? I put a coat hanger, but we gotta put these disclaimers out there because, right? Yep. Somebody will. I got some in my eye. Where's your safety glasses? I have safety contacts on. They're not patented yet, so we can't talk about it too much. <laughs> so just a real quick. Look at the oil pan. Oh my God. You know how long you'd have to take in time to clean this metal? What it's gonna look like, it's gonna look like the day was stamped. Oh. And it will. You just gotta leave it a little longer and let it work on the rust. You don't have to scrub a darn thing. You don't, it's just, to me it's the, it's the perfect way for oil pans, timing covers, anything that you don't wanna sit there and glass bead. Hey, how long would it take you to buff that? You'd oh, be God. buffing all day long. If you're paying somebody to buff it, it's not going to make any sense to pay somebody to all that labor. This is no labor. It just just takes some time. I'll leave it out here for a little bit longer, but look at It looks amazing. Oh, and it's it's just the... So um, fast, too. Yes, and it's just a quick thing. You can do a cast iron block in here, hence how big it is. I don't encourage it because you need to neutralize it. Um, but if, if uh, there's a lot of crud inside of, of the engine, Man, this thing fuzzes up like, like crazy. The only time I would do that is like a flathead forward or something real old that before any machine work is done. Right. Before any machine work is done and you can't leave it in there too long or you'll end up with nothing. It will take off layers of it. 
So okay. it's more invasive, but yet, if it's, you know, there's no other choice, um, do it, neutralize it, and then go on with the machine. In, if you're going to weld, and we're talking about galvanizing, a lot of people will weld right on top of it. And this white fuzz starts coming off of it. And then you're inhaling this, which is really bad. Not only that, but it actually affects the weld itself. I know a lot of people that weld, and they don't really care about it. It makes for not the best welding anyway. The cleaner it is, it enhances because you're going to make some mistakes, and we're going to put some impurities in it. So if you're starting out with something really clean, it's even better. Starting out with something that's releasing this poisonous gas, there's another thing. Yes, this is bad and it's dangerous and everything else. So is the gas that you're going to be inhaling if you're doing galvanized parts. Right. So in this regard, it's a perfect way to remove that. You could glass bead the parts. The problem with galvanizing is the way that it's made. It actually embeds itself in the metal. Oh. So when when they when that. they galvanize something, it's like a paint, but oh. it actually embeds itself in there, and that's what protects it. It's a galvanized coating to keep it from rusting. Try to take a piece from Home Depot or whatever, a galvanized pipe, and start grinding it. It's pretty thick. You'll see this shiny silver, that's the galvanizing, and you'll start grinding, and then, then you'll get to the metal. And it's in there. Right. Because it's not just a coating. It's actually embedded itself in the metal. Yeah, and that's something that I noticed because I dropped off this trailer to be completely blasted, but the galvanizing is still there. You almost honestly can't get it by grinding it, but you're going to take off layers because it's in there. It's embedded in there. What this does, it's a chemical. It's going to eat all that up. So you can brush it on, you can spray it on. You're gonna brush it on and you probably hose it off and you may do it a couple times okay. until it stops fizzing, then you know you got it on. Okay. So when you put it on there and it just doesn't do it anymore, at that point, you're gonna to need to neutralize it. So we're gonna use baking soda and water. You have to neutralize it before you paint it. Okay. Now when you weld, you're not gonna be releasing all of those harmful gases. Right. This does have harmful gases. Right. You'll, it'll choke you up. Okay. We'll put a mask on. Right. Do it outdoors. I would never use muriatic acid inside of the shop. You don't want to use muriatic acid on concrete. That's how they clean swimming pools. It's very invasive. Okay. But it will get to concrete. Like I said, it'll leave it like brand new concrete. If you leave it on there longer in your shop floor or whatever, it'll, it'll, it'll put a little hole in it. It'll through. Okay. Wear Big, rubber gloves. Like chemical style yeah. gloves. Yeah. Uh, outdoors, okay. you'll be fine. Whatever you have, you know, left over, neutralize it. pH level good. Then you can get rid of it. Me, you saw what we have. It'll last forever in a, a plastic container. Container. What I think I'm actually going to do is after removing the galvanizing, I think I'm going to try to collect as much of it as possible, then hose it down and collect it all so I'm diluting it a little bit, mm -hmm. and then save everything instead of trying to worry about disposing it, save it all, and then use it to clean bolts and other pieces. That's, that's what I do. You can add water to it. Yeah. It just dilutes it a little bit. And then it evaporates eventually too. This stuff you got, I don't know where you got it. There'll be a link at the bottom. I don't know. But <laughs> Amazon, link at the bottom to purchase. <laughs> this is actually the real stuff. Yeah. The original good stuff. Yeah, it's 31. Like, it'll burn your hands too. It'll burn real bad. All right, I'm definitely going to wear gloves. Then you could actually rinse right there in the in the bucket and you right. just have more of it. You saw the bucket that we have. Yeah. That's been... That's diluted. It's almost three quarters full now. Yeah. And it didn't start off that way. It's, but it's still super effective. It's still very effective. Also, once you remove the galvanizing, it was there to protect it from rusting. <gasps> it's going to rust right away. Instantly going to flash rust. All right. Well, yeah. cool. I'm so glad I asked before I just like jumped right into this because I guarantee you that I would have at a bare minimum had some damage to my shop floor. So. Yes. At the very All right. Well, that being said, let's get this shit working in action. Fizzing, then you know you got it on. Okay. So when you put it on there and it just doesn't do it anymore, at that point you're going to need to neutralize it. So we're going to use baking soda and water. You have to neutralize it before you paint it. Okay.
here's the thing. I cannot possibly be worse than the person who made this. The bar is set very low. So, I mean, it's like almost no risk. All right, so now that all that galvanizing is cleaned off, it's time to weld. And just to be safe, I'm gonna turn on all of my shop fans and get some good circulation in here, and my shop door is wide open. For watching I hope that you enjoyed this video as you can see a lot of welding has gotten done in this trailer so far but there is still a lot of welding left to do so I will show you the result of that in my next video so stay tuned to my crappy trailer project <laughs> bye Sweets. Hi, little bearded one. Hi, little bearded lady. Hi. Oh my goodness. You are so friendly. I'm so friendly. Your beard. Oh, bless you. Your beard. Oh my god. That face is to die for.